Welcome to the channel view, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, or Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, that I don't practice in the ministry anymore. But many of you remember what happened with the opening at the Olympics. You can make up your own mind about how you feel about that. There's been a lot happened since then. They've brought in lawyers, French drag queen Nikki Doll. Has sued inflammatory British activist Lawrence Frank Fox after he targeted drag queens involved in the Paris opening Olympic ceremony. A group of drag queens were faced with huge backlash online after appearing for a segment of the ceremony, with figures such as Fox taking to social media to attack the group of performers. The artist said they were depicting a party of Greek gods I'll let you make your own mind up about that. In a post on X, Fox46 shared the clip with the caption, No point in getting wound up when the child, Beep, wants to wind with you, wind you up. Just laugh at the deviant little pedos, etc. One of the drag queens involved, Nikki, real name, Carl Sanchez, took to social media on Friday to share a statement from their lawyer, Anne Sophie Luguenz, about their legal action against Fox. The statement reads, Following the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games on July 26, 2024, the artists who performed on the Debili catwalk were subjected to unprecedented waves of hatred and faced the trivialization of insults due to sexual orientation or gender identity. Stop homophobia lawyers have received numerous reports of incidents and incitements of hatred, insults, online harassment, threats and defamation. The firm was contacted by Mr. Carl Sanchez, known as Nicky Doll with a complaint in defamation filed against Mr. Lawrence Fox and other users of the social network X. Now these people are standing up in defiance of um, what is right. Now I brought this teaching to you um, to bring a reminder to the fact that the flood was sent by way of the deterioration of the civilization, the violence that come out of that, and now we have these people, they're starting to stand over Um, healthiness in life because it doesn't suit their narrative. Now, there was a lot go on with this and I'm not going to go into it because my ch channel's already sat shadow banned on YouTube. It was from the start. Um, whoever looks after my channel has really more or less blocked it. Um, I've had people contact me and say they can't like the videos, they can't comment on them. I've had YouTube on several occasions complain. But 
I'm not going to worry about all that. What we see in Genesis chapter 6, seeing these people wanted to pick the Lord Jesus Christ and they know so much about him and what um, he, he believes. In Genesis chapter 6, uh, verse 3, we come into this situation where it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful. Now the sons of God, there's all sorts of controversy and scholastic views about this but let's just say they're a demonic form of angel saw the daughters of men and that they were beautiful now that doesn't mean beautiful by way of looks it means beautiful by way of lust they were lusting after these humans but they appear to be from um, some kind of angelic or other form of being. And they took wives for themselves, all of whom they chose. Now you've got to understand something about women, and I say this very carefully, but when nations or civilizations or communities were conquered and the men were killed, the women would cross over to the conquering party and breed with them. Another thing too, back in the old days, the conquering in some parts of the world, the conquerors would eat the organs and things of the people that they conquered, believing that it would give them some kind of strength. Um, to overcome their enemies. Now the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and this is possibly who the sons of men are, the giants, and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And this is what we're talking about here. We've got to discern the difference between wickedness and righteousness. And that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, what I would like to say to you is, and this was just before the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross, the Last Supper. Um, I don't know where these people were going to, but I don't think they were going to do anything for humanity, if that's a fair thing to say, without anybody getting upset, because it's a very sensitive world out there now isn't it um, the intent of their hearts was evil continually and the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart so the Lord said I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now the people that have complained about things like this are now being sued. If the these people can find them, which they are through X and other social media um, platforms, 
they've now got lawyers that are going to sue them. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but not only have they forced this upon those that didn't like it, not only have they been chastised for doing what they've done by re rehearsing the Lord's Supper, re-rehearsing a very evil and by intent act of degenerating the Lord's Supper in such a way that it was corrupt. Um, the people that haven't liked it, they're pushing back and they're saying, right, well, we're going to sue you for not accepting what we've done. Does that sound like um, evil to you? Christians, you know, don't go around doing that. But in the midst of this, Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord asked him to prepare an ark. And Noah did according to what God asked. And then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, and the ark is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the ark's a type of. And the ark represented to us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him, whoever should believe, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Because God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, in my last talk, we read that the Lord asked for pairs, male and female, to be sent into the ark, and that Nara with his sons and wife were to go into the ark because the world had become violent. And when he'd entered the ark, male and female of all flesh, God had commanded him, as God had commanded him, the Lord shut him in. Now when we come into Christ, viewers, the Lord seals us with his Holy Spirit and he locks us in. There's a little bit of a key here. A lot of people say you can lose your salvation. Well, I'm going to leave that open, but my opinion is <laughs> we never gained our salvation by anything we did anyway. So um, be very careful there. Even um, Hebrews, Hebrews 1 says... That w He's the author and finisher of our faith. So we've got to be very careful about who we think is guaranteeing our salvation because it's not ourself. It's not ourself. You know, in all whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, all that was on the dry land died because God sent a flood. The Lord God sent a flood. And the world had come to this place where it was completely out of control. And he destroyed all living things that were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle. Now, we're going to go back to this timeline. And this is where you people that aren't sure about what's going on need to understand how salvation works, what's happening in the world, and where it's headed very clearly at this time. We come to the cross, the place where God, through his Son, invites us to have salvation in him, the cross. The cross is where we are judged. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him, not our righteousness. Not the righteousness which we have done, 
It's not by works of righteousness which we have done. But it's according to His mercy He saves us. His mercy. Not our mercy, not what we've done or haven't done. When we come to that place and we understand that God has given us the gift of His Son, that His Son died in our place, when we come to that place where we believe in what happened at the cross, and this is the good news, we are shut in. We are sealed and guaranteed by the promise of the Lord and the gift of His Spirit that we will miss judgment this judgment, the great white throne judgment. See, many Christians don't realize that they won't be going to the great white throne judgment. Our judgment was at the cross. Jesus took our sin upon himself. And then he is, and and after the cross, after his burial and resurrection, and being seen by many many people, he ascended to his priesthood, and he now sits at the right hand of God. We will. We will. Be caught up to meet him in the air. The dead in Christ will rise first and those who are alive will be caught up to meet him in the air. That's Our judgment was at the cross. We will not be judged. The only judgment we'll face is one of what we did as Christians. And it's not for punishment, it's for reward. You'll be rewarded for what you did. You won't be saved by what you did. You won't be punished by what you what you did. You'll suffer the consequences if you do evil, but you won't be punished. You'll still be saved as through fire, the Bible says. When you come to the cross, God shuts you in. So the fact of the matter is, it's not a matter of whether you're going to by way of what you do fall out it's a matter of whether you choose to go back out okay now if God gives you the gift and the revelation to see what's happening at the cross and you miss that gift or you take that gift and then you want to disgrace yourself you want to dismount from that something in your mind says to you I don't want to be with Christ anymore then that's on you that's completely on you it's on nobody else it's on you but what we're seeing and let me remind you is the same pattern of behavior in humanity where the corrupt and the violent and the misled and all these other ways that are contrary to Christianity and the Western world and the way that it's worked for good. The people of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 where Paul the Apostle says do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? He's just saying, do you not know? Well, if you don't know, he is about in this letter, 1 Corinthians 6, to let us know. And he says, don't be deceived. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, 
nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. And the reason for this is they don't want to. A lot of people want to have their cake and eat it too, and you can't. He goes, but you believers, some of you were like this, but you were washed, you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. This is what it means when it says that God, when Noah and his family went into the ark, God shut them in. In Christ he washed us, he sanctified us, set us apart, he washed our mind of things that we were attracted to and all those things that were bringing us undone, the lusts and desires of our sinful nature. He set us apart, sanctified us, he justified us, just as if we'd never sinned in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he sealed and guaranteed us by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. And he shut us in. And that's our journey. That's, that's how we go on. He's raised us up in the Lord by his power, just as if we'd never sinned. We were judged at the cross. We were saved, sanctified, washed, cleaned, set apart and given the Holy Spirit. And we will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. We will not go through what's happening. See, people don't realize Israel's the center. Everything centers around what's happening with Israel. The Antichrist and the rise of the Antichrist and the false prophet and all the rest of it and all that will go through this. The good news for the believers, not the unbelievers, it's bad news for the unbelievers, but for the believers, we were judged at the cross, given the Holy Spirit. Washed, sanctified and justified, just as if we'd never sinned because of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the good news. That's the good news of the gospel. So viewers, let me remind you, God will not be mocked, the Bible says. And don't you get your knickers in a knot over all of that. No, no. No, we can see it, we know what's happening. God will not be mocked. And neither should you be mocked by the people around you in your life that are possibly causing you trouble. Father, I pray right now for somebody that might be watching this and seeing that the answer is in the cross that we can see humanity is imploding just like it did before the flood, Sodom and Gomorrah. It seems as though with all the signs of the times and things going on around us so clearly and blatantly and so undone and so evil. Evil suing people for wanting to be good. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that people see the answer is in your cross. The answer is in your Son. In your Son. The Lord Jesus Christ.